when we talk about non-banks and dollars, people normally think about bank deposits, right? What you have in the bank. But I would broaden that a little bit more to include also treasury securities as dollars, right? So for a lot of people, especially if you're an institutional investor, you don't really hold all your wealth in deposits at JPM or Citibank or something like that. You hold them in something that's more uh, safer. It's credit risk free and also very liquid. So that's treasury securities. So for non-banks, then I would say just, you know, the non-bank population, investors, me, you, retail, dollars aren't just bank deposits, but also treasuries as well. When the Fed is doing something like quantitative easing, I don't think so much that they're increasing the quantity of dollars, but mostly changing the composition of dollars. Non-banks, like everyone, like me, you, investors, hold fewer treasuries, but more bank deposits. But if you want to focus narrowly on what M2 is, so that's broad money, that's just bank deposits. And so when the Fed is buying a lot of treasuries, they're paying with reserves that they print out of thin air. But the reserves though, like me and you non-banks, we don't have reserve accounts. So if I sell a treasury that gets bought by the Fed, I can't hold reserves. My bank holds it for me and credits me something in my checking account. So at the end of the day, bank deposits increase. It's a direct consequence of QE. And you can see that very clearly in the past two years. Let me make sure people are following you here. Where we're going with this is it depends who is selling the treasury. Yeah. Yeah. If if the treasury that's purchased by the Fed is uh, if the seller is a bank, then that is not going to increase M2. That's correct. Uh, If it's an individual, a non-bank entity, then it is true. It is going to increase M2. Yes. So my argument there is that you can't just blanket say that quantitative easing is money printing because it depends. It depends who are they actually buying from. You say, oh, George, you're just, you're splitting hairs. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because most people's view is that if the Fed takes their balance sheet from four trillion to eight trillion, as an example, if they expand their balance sheet, then it has to result in the CPI at some point in time going up. And if they don't understand the nuance, then they're that that's a mistake. Uh, they need to take it two or three steps further to really have uh, an educated view so they can determine the probabilities of CPI actually going up in the future. I think you're exactly right. I mean, we, you don't even have to look at the U.S. You can look at Japan. You can look at the Eurozone. They've been doing quantitative easing, like Japan, for example, quantitative easing to a much larger extent than than the U.S. Uh, the Bank of Japan basically owns almost the entire bond market, right? And you still can't get inflation there. So obviously, quantitative easing itself does not cause inflation. It could have some inflationary impacts. For example, if you lower interest rates, let's say, if you lower the tenure a lot, maybe a lot of people will buy more houses, right? Stronger demand for houses pushes house prices up. That That's rural economy inflation. So it definitely have to be more nuanced. I, I think that, that in practice, what's been happening the past two years, and this isn't always going to happen, sometimes maybe banks will sell treasuries to the Fed, but in the past two years at least, banks have been buying a lot of treasuries alongside the Fed. So the people who have been selling- and Keeping them on their balance sheet or just to sell to the Fed? keep them on their balance sheet. Okay. The banks have bought enormous amounts of treasuries the past two years. So if you, if you want to look at it, there's on Fred, there's a, there's a chart there that shows it. So agency MBS and treasuries together, they've bought about one point, uh, one point something trillion the past two years. So it's a lot. So banks are buyers of treasuries alongside the Fed. So in the past two years, the people who've been selling are, are not banks. Selling to the mm-hmm. Fed are not banks. So how does that process work? Because I know, or correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the Fed can't directly buy from uh, a non-bank. I believe they can in in the UK. I think they can. I think they can buy from pensions, even if the pension doesn't have an account with uh, uh, the Bank of England. But here, I think the Fed has to buy from a a bank and or primary dealer. So would would that mean uh, that the the primary dealers are having to go out into the real economy or into the non-bank entities, buy those treasuries to flip them to the Fed 
uh, in yeah, addition that's... to the, the, them expanding the amount of treasuries that they're keeping on their balance sheet. So I would make a distinction. There's actually two separate entities. There's a primary dealer and there's a bank, and these are different entities. So if you have a big bank like JP Morgan, JP Morgan is going to own a primary dealer, but it's yeah, a separate, that... separate business, a separate legal entity from its bank. So you're exactly right. So the Fed only deals with primary dealers. There's uh, 23, 24 of them. I think there's a new one. Um, so that, in my in, in my view, is, is doesn't really change the analysis. Um, it's it's for example, let's say you go buy a stock, you call ask Fidelity to buy it for you, right? Fidelity goes and you know is your broker basically, right? So ultimately, you're buying it from someone else is selling it, and Fidelity is kind of just like the middleman. If you're if you're selling a treasury, what happens is that you have to call up a dealer. There's no exchange, there's no anything. So if I'm an institutional investor, I have a billion dollars in treasuries I have to sell, I call up my dealer and I, and I ask my dealer to, to make a market for me. And if I don't like the price, I'll call another dealer. Eventually, I'll sell the treasury to the dealer and the dealer just takes it. And in this, let's say, assuming that it sells it to the Fed, then it just sells it to the Fed. And then the money just goes from the Fed through the dealer to me. Uh, well, me and you know my bank holds reserves and I hold deposits. So they're just the dealer, primary dealers are just middlemen. I, I wouldn't really emphasize too much about their role. Um, it's true that you they the Fed only trades with them, but it doesn't really, in my view, change the analysis.